Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, where we give you guys a first perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, do the Clippers have the best duo in the NBA? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, be sure to check out our Dreamers Pro Premium platform that we're launching, and also be on the lookout for DreamersPro.com, which we're going to be launching at the end of this month. Anyway, let me get into this topic here. This is a pretty interesting uh, t topic for me. Now, the Clippers this far, we recently did a video, and it all depends when you guys are going to see that video. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, and you, you, you don't want to miss the video that we're going to do about the NBA being rigged against the Clippers, trust me, you don't want to miss that video. So if this is the first video you're seeing, you may want to subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss that video. Anyway, the Clippers have started off, the Clippers have had a very tough schedule this season. Currently, they have a 7-4 and four record a a as we currently stand. But the, di the difference is... Of the losses that they've had, the Clippers have played eight above 500 teams. They played the Spurs, the Blazers, the Lakers, the Nuggets, the Mavericks, the Jazz, and the Warriors, right? The teams that they've lost to, of the four losses that they've had, they've all come from above 500 teams. They've lost to the Mavs, the Jazz, the Warriors, and I can't I can't remember uh, right now the, la the, the fourth loss that they have. But they've played some very tough competition, and I spoke in a recent video, why, for, for whatever reason, the Clippers are not getting any recognition for the fact that they're beating some pretty good teams in a lot of these power rankings, in the general sports media for reasons that I don't understand, right? I don't understand why this team is being penalized. However, going into this season, there was a lot of pressure on Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Paul George, specifically because of how he capitulated and kind of, and kind of melted down in the playoffs last season, especially in, in the Orlando bubble in that series against uh, the Denver Nuggets when they blew that 3-1 lead. Y'all remember the game seven. We don't need to go back. We don't need to go over it again, but y'all remember what happened. And Paul George kind of lamented the fact that he wasn't able to really train in the offseason. The season prior, he had two shoulder, shoulder, two shoulder surgeries. So that kind of held him back. He couldn't train. He couldn't get him his body back into shape. And during the regular season, he had some knickknack injuries like a hamstring pull that kept him in and out of the lineup. So he wasn't really himself. If I go back and look at his numbers uh, the season prior, let me just pull up his numbers here, which I do have. Okay, fantastic. That season, his first season for the Clippers, he averaged 21.5 points per game, shot 44% from the field. He shot 42%, 40, excuse me, 41% from the three-point line, 87%, 88% from the free throw line, got you 5.7 rebounds, 3.9 assists, and 1.4 steals, right? Some people may say, oh, those are great numbers. Not really. The year before, Paul George averaged 28 points per game, shot 44% from the field, 39% from the three-point line. He shot 84% from the free throw line, got you 8.2 rebounds, 4.1 assists, and two steals per game, right? So he had a much better season the, the season prior. But this offseason, he was able to, you know, take care of his body, train, get himself ready, get himself, uh, 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 put himself in the mental space to be able to go out there and prove a lot of people wrong and really show show the league what he's worth. And this season has been a complete turnaround. This season, thus far, he's off the charts. He's shooting, he's scoring 25 points per game. He's shooting 49.7, let's say 50% from the field. He's shooting 51.2% from the three this season, 51 in, in 10 games played. He's shooting 92% from the free throw line. He's getting you 6.3 rebounds, 5.4 assists, and 1.5 steals. Essentially, Paul George is having a 50-40-90 club type of season. This is, this is Stephen Curry, uh, Kevin Durant territory type of production. So Paul George is having an outstanding, outstanding year thus far. Now, if we look at Kawhi Leonard, the other duo, the other uh, member of, of the Clippers, last season he had a sensational season as usual. 27.1 points per game, 47% from the field, 38% from the three-point line, 86, almost 87, almost 89% from the free throw line, 7.1 rebounds, 4.9 assists, 1.8 steals. This this season, Kawhi Leonard got off to a bit of a small, a slow start because of the the mass that he had on his face, which I believe was affecting some of his performance with his breathing and all these different things. One of our viewers mentioned something that I didn't take into account, which is the fact that he may have been on some medication as well to help kind of heal the wound that he had. Uh, in the bottom of his uh, of his face so all of these things might have might, might have been affecting him and one night he had a very poor shooting out night where he shot four of 20 and his running mate Paul George 
picked up the slack and scored 39 points that game just to show you how Paul George has been reliable thus far in the season. So last the last game Kawhi Leonard played, I think he scored about 35 points and he hit seven three-pointers and had a career high in points, 21 points in a quarter. That was a career high for him. So thus far for the season, in nine games played, he missed two games because of the mouth, uh, because of that injury that he had. So Kawhi Leonard is averaging 24.4 points per game, shooting 47% from the field, 43% from the three-point line, 85% from the free throw line, getting you 4.9 rebounds, which is low for him, which I believe is going to go up, 5.7 assists, which so far I think is a career high for him, and getting you two steals a game. And these guys, it's not just the fact that they're putting up good numbers, but they're putting up good numbers in the flow of the offense, given the fact that they're now running a little bit of the triangle offense, and they're getting a lot of their shots in the flow of the offense. No one is dominating the ball, and everyone is getting their touches. So these guys are playing very well together. If we look at the other duo that most people are going to point to and say, okay, listen, this is the number one duo in the NBA, <clears throat> it's going to be LeBron James and Anthony Davis. LeBron, on the other hand, is having a fantastic season as usual, uh, scoring 24 points per game, shooting 40. 9% from the field, 36% from the three, which is pretty good for him, 70% from the free throw line, getting you 8.3 8, 8 rebounds, 7.5 assists, and 0.8 steals per game. So those are LeBron's numbers. But where I think the drop-off happens is with Anthony Davis, right? That's where I think things kind of balance out and skew towards the Clippers duo. Anthony Davis thus far this season has, has been off to a slow start. He's averaging 22.5 points per game. He's shooting 56% from the field, which is very efficient. 40% from the three, 76% from the free throw line, uh, getting you 8.7 rebounds, 3.1 assists, 1.1 steals, and almost two blocks per game. His defense is still there, but his overall productivity is not what it was the season prior. Last season, he averaged 26 points per game, shot 50% from the field, and then got you 9.3 rebounds. So he got more rebounds, got more assists. Uh, got more steals and got more blocks last season. Now, obviously, it's still early in the season. Uh, AD's only played 10 games, so I expect those numbers to, to to change and regress towards the mean, which is his general, which is his general performances that he puts forth every single season. But thus far, though, I think the Clippers have had the better duo. The Lakers have the better record, but the Clippers have played the tougher teams, right? They play the tougher teams, and given the fact that they're implementing a new offensive system, I think the Clippers just I, I, Clippers, I think the Clippers are just having the better uh the better the better regular season. Another reason why I think the Clippers are probably going to be the best duo towards the end of the season is this team needs reps. This team needs to play a lot of games together to really understand themselves. They're just now beginning to integrate Marcus Morris back into the lineup. This team needs reps. At one point last season, when the team was really beginning to hit their stride, when everyone was healthy. They were playing their best stretch of basketball. They lost to the Lakers in that stretch, but they bounced back again and got another win. The Clippers were playing fantastic basketball at that particular point in the regular season. I think the Clippers need to work their way into that. They're not playing their best basketball uh, as of yet, but I think the Clippers thus far have been the best duo in the NBA. Some people may feel otherwise, but I think it's the Clippers. So what I want to know from you guys is, have the Clippers been the best duo in the NBA, or do you think it's another duo? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.